Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have a fun patriotic tiered tray for you today. But first, if you wouldn't mind, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe so that you can see all of my videos. Okay, so I've already got my two tier trays, but this is going to be tier tray number three. I got this amazing tier tray on Amazon. I will post the link below, don't worry. And it's by this company um, called HB Design. And it had the exact dimensions I needed for my entryway table. And it is beautiful. Look at this wood. Isn't that beautiful? It is like a large rectangular two tier tray. And so this is the smaller tray. And these are all the bits and pieces and so easy to put together. And check this out, a handwritten note from Jordan, the founder of the company. I love supporting home businesses and I love it when you can go on Amazon and get it shipped to your house, like prime, I mean, so convenient, yet you're supporting a small business. So definitely check them out. This tear tray is legit. So not very many pieces. This slides onto there, and then you put the smaller tier tray, and then all you got to do is slide the other one on. I'm making sure that I get it going the right way, and that is all there is to it. Time to put the bottom tray on, and we have a new tier tray. So I'm putting this tier tray on my entry table by my front door. And I want to get ready for the 4th of July. So I thought this would be the perfect tear tray to do a seasonal theme. So as soon as people come in my house, they see it. It'll be a nice greeting. And I love it. Isn't it beautiful? Okay. So the first thing we're going to make for a tear tray today are some little stacked books. They're so easy to make with these little bins from Dollar Tree. They don't have the openings on the side. They're all one pieces, but they have indentations and it looks like three books stacked on top of each other. So I am just going all over this little crate with this ivory chalk paint by Waverly, which is my go-to color. I use this on everything. I love it. It's not this stark white and it really goes with my coastal decor, but I am not doing a coastal theme on this tear tray. I am doing a traditional red, white, and blue Americana Fourth of July theme here. And I am giving it a second coat there. I want it to look nice and bright. And I have a plan. I want the top book to have um, an American flag on it. So that is what I'm going for. So I kind of wanted everything to have a nice base coat of white. That will be easy to paint the red and blue on top of. And then the white parts of the flag can stay white. Now I'm using this Ocean um, Chalk Paint by Waverly. It's the first time I'm using it. And um, I am just going to do this side of the crate or book <laughs> in blue to do the blue star pattern for the um, United States flag. And I got a good coat on there, giving it a dry. I want it to be um, really good coverage. This is going to be really the only blue part of the book. So I'm getting that little section on there. And I had a little bit of bleeding with that um, painter's tape from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to switch over to a better brand here and just touch that up a little bit because I want it to be nice and crisp. I'm not really going to um, have this be a distressed piece like I normally do. And so the flag is like the easiest thing to paint, like for real. So you have your like blue quadrant and then you just have lines. So you just use painter's tape. So easy. I'm spacing the red lines um, apart from the sides because I kind of have a plan. So this is the Crimson um, by Waverly Chalk Paint from Walmart. And I am painting that on. And my plan is to... Instead of doing a red, white, and blue book, which was my, was my original plan, I thought I would continue red, white, red, white to continue the stripes like the top on the flag. 
So that is why I spaced those out, the two in the middle, and it actually fit perfectly to give me three whites and two reds on top. And I'm just getting that dry enough so that I can remove the painter's tape and we can see our crisp lines. This is the automotive tape from Walmart and it works really good. It's actually for curved surfaces, but I'm a fan. So that is the flag that I was thinking for the top. So now I need to, I'm gonna make the middle book white or ivory. And so I'm just taping that off and then I'm going to paint the top book and the bottom book <laughs> red. And so that will continue the stripe pattern that was on the top. And I didn't really like how some of the white paint, you know, went down into the cracks there and some didn't. So I'm just gonna go over that with a pen and just kind of draw that in there to show the separation between the books to make it a little bit more obvious. And this is the easiest stack book tray. I mean, I have a, another project where I did like a coastal nautical stack books with the large trays. It turned out really cute. This one is perfect though for a tiered tray because it's nice and small. So just going over that crimson chalk paint. And I'm gonna have titles like on the side of the book and I'm gonna use my Cricut to um, label my books. Going over with a second coat with a red, it takes usually more than one coat to get really good coverage. And there is my three books. And I really like how this is coming together. I'm gonna to turn it over and do the other side. I'm just doing the ink pen in the cracks. And I am touching up a little bit of crazy paint I had there and going in and doing the red. And you can see from that angle there how that continues the stripe. And it turned out really cute. And instead of doing a stencil um, for the stars, I kind of wanted this to look rustic. So I'm just using this white paint pen from Target and I'm just drawing stars on. And it actually looks pretty good. I mean, I'm not a good hand painter at all, but all I did was draw stars, like you would make a typical star um, with my paint pen and it turned out actually pretty cute. So I am gonna tape off the sides because I want the sides, even though they have um, an opening there, I still want that to look like stacked books over there and to go along with the other sides. I'm gonna leave that opening. I don't think it really takes away from the project. I think you can totally get away with it. And I did have a little bit of bleeding there. I'm just touching up and time to tape off the other side. That second book was a little bit um, bigger than my tape, so I just had to use two pieces. And two coats of crimson. And this is really coming together, isn't it cute? I really liked how easy this project was and how it turned out. So first I'm gonna cut some white vinyl I'm gonna use the white vinyl for the red books and then I'm cutting some red vinyl for the white book. And that's why you keep your scraps and your Cricut vinyl because these are the perfect size pieces to cut something small like this. And what it's gonna say is just stars and stripes like the flag. So um, I cut out stars and stripes on the white and then I'll do and with the red. So I'm just using this awesome paper, transfer paper that I get off Amazon. I can post a link for that as well too. It's really good. I like it a lot better than the Cricut or other brands of um, vinyl um, transfer paper. It just, it doesn't take the paint off. It's easy enough to see through and it just does a really good job of not sticking too much to the vinyl. And so this is the red piece. And this was a cursive font that I did just on Cricut. And um, 
it was just a super fast, easy little project. And I usually hand paint my wood, but this is such a small scale that you can totally get away with the vinyl. You can't really tell that it's vinyl. So there it is, Stars and Stripes. Now I wanted to wrap it together to make it look like the books were tied together. So I'm just using this jute twine from the Dollar Tree. Just wrapped it around until I was happy with it and just tying that off and just with a cute little bow. Then I found these cute little um, bike charms um, from the Target Dollar Spot for a dollar and they come in little tiny red and blue plastic stars and I thought that'd be really cute to put on the ends of my bow and I decided that it looked good with two blue ones. So there's actually a little opening on the back to put it on the spokes of your bike and so that fit over the jute twine really well and I'm just using some hot glue to um, secure it. And we have the first piece for our patriotic tiered tray. These little stars and stripes stacked books. Isn't that cute? I love that. Oh my gosh, this project is so easy. I'm using one of these paper plates from the Dollar Tree and one of these little wood blocks from the Dollar Tree. I like that it's kind of a fancy shape. It's chunky. They have these all the time, like in their craft section for a dollar. And I just used um, a pen and I drew out that shape. Now I'm going in and very carefully cutting that shape out because I don't want you to see any of the exposed wood. I want it to be like a perfect image to go on the front of this and to make a little red truck with a flag in the back sign for our tear tray. This project could not be easier for real. So I'm just sanding it a little bit. I'm making sure that I cut it right to size. And then I decided I didn't really want the natural edges on it. I think it would be prettier if it had red. So I'm doing the crimson chalk paint again on the edges. Um, and that'll go nicely with that little red truck. And I got, you know, several different kinds of paper plates um, for crafting from Dollar Tree. This is the first one I've used and it was so easy. You can do it with the paper plates. You can do, they have like paper, like hot dog holders. They had napkins, so many options. Even they even had like a tissue paper. Then I decided it's a tear tray. So you're probably gonna be able to see the back of it too. So I'm just gonna go in and paint the back of it red just to make it a finished piece. And even though this project was super easy, I love how it turned out. It's really cute. So just giving that a dry all over with my heat gun. Oh, and I love this heat gun. I will post a link below for that too. I need to make a list <laughs> and give that a good dry. Just trying to make sure that I have really good coverage with the red. Sometimes you get a little bit of the wood showing through. So all I need to do is attach that to the front. So I'm just gonna use some Mod Podge and put down a even healthy coat on the wood. And I'm just gonna stick that on. And using my brayer to smooth that out to make sure there's no bubbles or anything. But the plate was so thick that it was really super easy to Mod Podge and to work with. No wrinkles or bubbles at all. And then I'm just gonna go over, I can go ahead and do the top because it's so thick, I didn't really even need to wait for it to dry. And I'm giving that top coat to dry with my dryer. And that is all there is to that Tear Cherry project. It is so cute. And like the background of it actually looks like even like shiplap. It's so cute. Okay, my next project, I'm using one of these Color Your uh, United States <laughs> craft kits they have at Dollar Tree right now. And since it's wood, I thought it would be a fun idea to stain it with this antique wax um, from Waverly from Walmart and bring out the fact that it is a beautiful piece of wood and see how like, I'm just going over one coat and then I'm just gonna dry that off with a paper towel. And you can still see the black paint underneath with the outline of all the states. And again, this is a tear tray, so you're probably gonna be able to see the back of it. So I'm gonna go in and stain the back too to give it a nice professional finished look.
and this stuff dries so fast. And I'm just kind of speeding it up so that I can finish working on the other side of it. I thought it was a little plain, and so I am going to up its game here. <laughs> so cleaning up my mess. I'm just working on one of those cutting mats from the Dollar Tree. They are so easy uh, to clean up. And I am looking for a paint pen. And I'm, what I was looking for was a red paint pen. And I have no idea why I don't have a red paint pen, but I'm searching for one. Then I give up and I say, okay, white paint pen it is, right? Well, I decided to go in and color in the states that my family has lived in. So I thought that would be a fun idea to personalize it and make it just custom for our tear tray. And so I am painting, I painted Pennsylvania, I'm painting Missouri, and then I'm painting Florida. So as a family, we lived in Missouri, and then we lived in Pennsylvania, and then we lived in Missouri, and now we live in Florida. We got tired of the winter, and I love the beach. <laughs> and it did take a couple of coats because I really want, like, even coverage. I don't want to see any of the stroke marks with the paint pen. I'm kind of glad that I used white. It did turn out really good even though I really wanted red. <laughs> and just making sure it looks perfect. Missouri seemed a little tall. Not sure how to scale this is. <laughs> and I am trying to get that dry. The paint pen does not dry quite as fast as the uh, chalk paint. Now I found these star stickers at Dollar Tree as well, and I thought it would be fun to take some of these gold star stickers and put them on the cities that we lived in. So I am trying to find Philadelphia and putting a gold star there. And this not only personalizes it, but it adds a little bit of bling to it. And then that's our current city in Florida and where we lived when we lived in Missouri. I just love how this turned out. It's so fun. But then I realized that it was the same color as my tear tray and you were not going to be able to see it. So it actually needs to be on a sign of some kind. So I'm using one of these bamboo cutting um, boards from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to make a background for it. So I'm using that ivory chalk paint by Waverly and I'm trying to get a really good coating to cover up all of that beautiful bam bamboo. And these are really um, great signs to craft with. If you see them, grab them because they're real sturdy. There's nothing cheap about them at all. And then I thought it would be cute to um, do like the flag stripes background on the back of it. So I'm just doing some spacers and marking off lines with my painter's tape. Flag stripes are like the easiest thing to DIY. So easy. And then I'm just going in with my foam paintbrush and giving it a good coat of this crimson chalk paint. And of course with the red, I'm gonna go in and give it another coat so I get that bright, even coverage. And I'm trying to get it dried good enough so I can take off the painter's tape it was a little unlevel, so I decided to go in and um, give it a third coat. And look at those beautiful crisp lines, and that gives me a, such a good background to put the little United States on. Then I decided that it would look better if the edges were red, and so that is what I'm doing, and I'm not doing anything to the back of it. So I'm just gonna go in with hot glue, give it a good coating, and just stick that onto the little bamboo cutting board. And now it will definitely stand out on my tear tray and not just blend in with the wood color. And this is like one of my favorite pieces from the tear tray. It turned out so cute. Oh my gosh, this project is so difficult. I found these sparklers at Target and they're so cute because they're in a little flag box. A sparkler goes perfect with a tiered tray for 4th of July. So that's all I'm going to do is put a box of sparklers on my tiered tray. And hey, they'll be functional. We can light them too at 4th of July. 
Okay, next project. I have one of these metal arrows from Dollar Tree and it reminded me of a firework, like a rocket. So I'm going to use some of these paper 4th of July decorations from Dollar Tree. Um, they come in this cute red with stars um, pattern and also the same pattern in blue. And so I thought the combination of those would be really cute to decorate this a rocket or a firework, I guess. Um, and I thought that would be a nice touch fun touch for my um, tear tray to do a little firework. So I cut the red star piece for the top arrow and then I'm just using a pen and drawing out the base of the rocket and cutting that out just a little bit longer than it needs to be so it will go under the triangular piece there at the top. And this, this turned out really cute. It was so stinking easy. So I'm just going in with Mod Podge again and putting down a good coat and putting that on top of it. I wasn't sure how the Mod Podge and the metal would work, but it actually worked really well. And I'm using my brayer. There was a few wrinkles because this paper is a lot thinner um, than what I was working with before, but once it dries, it was completely fine. There was no wrinkles, but the brayer does definitely help if you have something to roll on there and get that um, good and smooth. Then I'm just gonna try to trim up any paper that overhangs the sides. And I kinda make sure that's good and dry since it's wanting to wrinkle a little bit before um, I do any Mod Podge on top because I don't wanna mess up the paper. And then I'm gonna give it that coat on top that's going to seal that on there and we have a cute little firework. And I might do some more. I have a lot of the wood arrows too, so I might do some more firework projects. I think it turned out really cute. It's definitely the right shape for a firework. And I'm getting that good and dry, making sure all the wrinkles are gone. And then I want to stand it up on my tear tray. And so I'm using some of these little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree. I'm gluing a couple of them together to try to make a stand. And I think I want it to go like to the right so it can kind of stick off my tear tray. And maybe I might be able to use it on the bottom of my tear tray. So I'm trying to make a stand that will make it stand like crooked like that but the metal sign is too heavy so I go in with some more Jenga blocks and I try to make like a little l-shaped bracket to try to get that to stand up right but it's still too heavy and so what I end up doing is just going in with some of this double-sided tape from the Dollar Tree and I will just stick it to my tear tray. Now, I got this adorable gnome for, I think it was $3.50 from Dollar General. And normally I make my gnomes, but this was so cheap and so cute that I couldn't resist. I thought I wasn't gonna have to do anything to him, but then I was like, he really needs to be holding a flag. But I couldn't really find a flag small enough to go in his little hand. And so I'm using some of these window clings from the Dollar Tree and I just cut out one of the little flags and I am just hot gluing a toothpick to it to put in his hand and it turned out so cute. I'm sorry if you can hear all that coughing. My husband's in the other room coughing. I don't know what the heck is going on in there. And I'm just using hot glue to try to close his hand on the little flag and it makes it look like he's holding it and I love that little touch. So easy. Okay, so I'm using one of these wood chunky um, blocks from the Dollar Tree and I thought it would be cute to cover it with one of these bandanas in the firework print. And so I just set that on the fabric and used one of those gold light -like chalk markers from the Dollar Tree to draw around it so I can see um, exactly where I would need to cut, to cut out a star of the fireworks. And I am just going to 
Mod Podge this fabric onto the front of the little chunky star. And since it's fabric, it's gonna need a lot of glue. So I put a healthy coat of Mod Podge down and then I'm just using my brayer to smooth that out. Then I'm making sure that all my edges are glued down well and trimmed up. And I really want it to be the texture of the fabric, so I'm not gonna Mod Podge on top. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And it actually was so easy, but it actually turned out really cute and it gave a little bit of texture to my tear tray. Okay, this project is so easy from the Dollar Tree. Check out this cute little fan. I thought this would give me a nice dose of blue stars and red and white stripes, and that's going to go on there as well. Now, this is a feather duster. <laughs> when I saw this feather duster in the Dollar Tree, I thought, fireworks. So I'm like, well, I will just cut off like a pom-pom and put it on a stick and put it in this cute little flag bucket that I got at the Dollar Tree and that'll be easy peasy. Well, I don't know what kind of wire is inside this feather duster, but I tried every tool I could find to try to cut through that metal. All kinds of wire nippers, everything. And I tried bending it back and forth to see if it would break off. And it was like the strongest piece of wire I've ever seen in my life. Like, it's from Dollar Tree. I thought it would be easy to dismantle this. But they made this thing to, like, last forever. So if you need a good feather duster, <laughs> go to Dollar Tree. Because this thing is, like, completely indestructible. I'm even trying to hacksaw it. And that didn't even work. I was going through my husband's tools and just kept trying to find something, anything that could get through that wire. And oh my gosh, I thought I was going to have to give up on this project. <laughs> and so I'm using some kind of a wire nipper here. And the tools were kind of even discoloring it a little bit because they were not the newest tools, but I just bent it the right way and vitally it popped off. Oh my gosh. So my plan is to take some of these long wood dowels from the Dollar Tree and put the little pom-pom on the end to make it look like an exploding firework and to put it in this cute little flag tin that I got at the Dollar Tree. I took the handle off because I didn't think that really added anything. And then these green foam pieces they have at the Dollar Tree fit in the little tins they have there all the time perfectly. But I didn't want it to look, be exposed and I didn't really want any moss or anything. So I just used that um, ocean chalk paint to paint it blue to make it blend in with the bucket so you don't really notice the foam. And I'm trying to trim that little pom-pom up so that I can have a place to attach it to my wooden dowel. Of course, it was fighting me because <laughs> this thing was hard, y'all. I don't think it was meant to ever come apart. <laughs> so I'm using some of that Antique Wax by Waverly to stain one of the dowels just to make it kind of blend in with my wood tear tray and not stand out like the raw wood that it was. And that dries almost instantly, and that part is easy. And then I thought the hot glue alone is not going to hold this because there's really nothing to glue to it. First, I'm just hot gluing that into my tin. And I have that blue floral wire, wire there. I'm going to use that and a combination of hot glue to try to attach my little pom-pom onto the dowel. Because there was just... It was a really hard connection, so I just kind of overlapped them just a little bit and put hot glue on there, wrapped the floral fire wire around them, and then wrapped that around itself. A little bit more hot glue to make sure that it's good and secure because I don't want it to fall off. And I don't know why this made me think of fireworks, but it totally did, and it actually turned out really cute. So I'm just going to put that in my little flag tent. And we have some fireworks for the tear tray. Now, of course, that paint didn't want to dry on that foam very well. So I was just giving that a little help. And just putting that in the middle, putting a little hot glue on there, even though that kind of really melts the foam. 
and getting that just the way that I like it. But then I thought it was too plain. So I decided to do two more fireworks. And so I'm using that antique wax to stain two more of the little um, dowels from the Dollar Tree. And I got these cute little blue um, bows from both Dollar Tree and Target. I thought I wanted them to look differently. So I got two different ones from two different places. Now I'm using these cool little miter shears that I got off Amazon. I can post a link for those as well. And they cut these dowels like so easy. And my plan here, these are the ones from Dollar Tree. And they were two for a dollar. So they were way cheaper than the ones from Target. And I thought I could just take off the sticky or the cover of the sticky part and use the sticky and a combination of hot glue to put that on the end of my dowel. So I'm going to put that on there, put a bunch of hot glue, and glue that together. And this one was actually really easy. So I definitely recommend these bows from the uh, Dollar Tree. It worked really, really well and was so easy <laughs> compared to the last one. And I cut that a little shorter so it would be a different height than the other firework. And I think they really complement each other and look good together. Now I bought two of these from Target. I think they were $1.99 each. And I'm trying the same technique. But they have these giant white stickers that you could totally see. So I am going in and trying to cut off the four corners of the white sticker. And then it fell apart. <laughs> now there's like a um, plastic cut piece in there holding it all together so I'm just trimming it all the way down to that little plastic cup I can't really trim it any further and I am trying again with hot glue to get that on the end of my dowel now this one bought me probably just as much as the first one because <laughs> it just did not want to stay on there then I thought I had it and I was getting ready to put it in and surprise it fell apart again so I hot glue it back on there again. And I don't know why this one just did not want to work when the one from the Dollar Tree was just like a complete breeze. So I just keep adding hot glue, putting some of the little blue tinsel back in there to try to cover that up. And this one made a terrible mess. But I finally got it put together. Yay, and I have three fireworks for my tear tray. And um, I'm just adjusting them with glue to make that one a little taller than the other two. And this is the final product. So cute. Okay, I got these at the Target Dollar Spot for $5 the other day. And they are battery-operated lights. Um with their 4th of July stuff at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Spot section. So I am just trying to figure out how to unwind these. These are the perfect colors for my tear tray. And I thought that'd be a really fun touch to have lights on my tear tray. And um, it would be a nice patriotic little, you know, glimmer of light <laughs> when you come into the house. So they take um, AA batteries and they're a tight fit. I'm like... Uh, do I have the right size batteries? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I just got to really put them in there. And this is what they look like when they are all lit up. And I thought I could string it like on both layers of the tear tray to give a fun effect. And there I am showing you <laughs> the light. Okay, so this next project is two more of these chunky stars. These are great size for tear trays. And this is actually from a former uh, project that I did for you, but I found the clips so I could show you exactly how I made them. And I'm just filling in the little holes on those chunky stars with some of the spackling from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna do a really interesting technique um, to make these. You can totally do this with paint. It would be super easy, but I wanted to try sublimation on these. I've had some luck sublimating on wood from the Dollar Tree, as long as it is a sturdy piece and that it's kind of flat. 
So it has even pressure when I do sublimation. So I'm just making sure they're good and smooth and I'm actually gonna use this heat tape for sublimation and I'm gonna tape off the sides. Now, normally you wouldn't need to do that, but I have noticed that when you sublimate with an image that goes over the side of the wood during sublimation, sometimes the color like bleeds down to the side and I want the sides to be like the um, rough exposed wood. So I made this cute little star pattern on Canva. It's blue with white stars um, drawn on there. And this was actually part of a dupe project that I was doing for Kirkland's. And I'm going in with my Cricut Easy Press 2 at 400 degrees for one minute. And when you pull off the sublimation paper, you have your stars. Now, I did have a little color variation on that one. But I am going to go in and do the same thing to do my stripes for my flag. I thought it would be cute to have one in stars and one in stripes, just like my inspiration piece. So I also designed this in Canva, just the red and white stripes I took off of a flag image. And I'm just doing the same thing. Cricut Easy Press to 400 for one minute. And just showing you that little bit of color variation in that first one, but this one turned out flawless. Just taking the heat tape off and we have two stars that are perfect for our red, white, and blue tear tray. Now I'm gonna seal them with some clear acrylic just to bring out that sublimation, but you could have totally done this with star stickers and blue paint or painter's tape for the stripes. And I just wanted to do something fun. I have a sublimation printer and I'm always looking for ways to use it. If you're interested in sublimation, I have started a second channel called Sublimation Beach. And I'm gonna start posting my sublimation videos there because they don't seem to be getting a lot of views on this channel. So YouTube likes to kind of put you in a niche. And so I'm gonna try doing a second channel for that. Okay, this project is, I got this at the Dollar Tree. It's just a little uh, wood envelope sign with a star on it that I can't even read what it says. I think it said grateful or something like that. And um, it is just a gray star and I want to make it red. So I'm gonna use some of this chalk paint by Waverly in crimson. And I should have painted it white first because lesson learned, I had to put a gazillion coats on there to cover up that word for some reason. And I'm just sanding that down where I tore off the star because I kind of want to paint that piece here. And this is from a previous project too I pulled the clip from um, because I thought it would be perfect for the tear tray and I wanted to show you how I made it. So I'm using that ivory chalk paint by Waverly and I just taped off the sides because the sides of it actually had like a cute little star pattern and I definitely wanted to save that, but I wanted the sign to be white and bright and then I can put that little red star back on where the gray star was before and have a cute little patriotic sign. Now, I am distressing this with antique wax. I did not distress any of the other pieces for this um, piece, but since this was from a previous project, um, it is distressed, but I think it goes okay. It's still the red, white, and blue. Or actually, this one's red, white, and wood, I guess. So that little wood star has gotten so many coats of red paint because you could keep seeing the word through there. And just taking off the painter's tape on the side where I left the star pattern because it was super cute. And I'm just gonna hot glue that red star onto the front of our sign. And then I wanted to put a word on there. So I'm just using some white vinyl and I'm just gonna cut out a word in the skinny font um, that looks like Ray Dunn on my Cricut. And it is ready to go. And I am, I cut out the word, I cut out a couple words there because I had more than one project I was working on, but um, it's just USA. And I'm just gonna put that um, white USA in the skinny font on my red star. And I'm gonna use some of this awesome paper, transfer paper again. And just cut apart the two projects there. Make sure that's on my transfer paper. The skinny font can be kind of hard to work with because it is so skinny. 
but this one did not seem to cause any problems and I almost made it too big, but it just fit. <laughs> Gonna line it up and then just scrape it down with my little Cricut scraper and there is a cute little sign for our tear tray. It works perfectly. Now this project is super fun. I found these beads in the graduation section. When I grabbed them, I said, these remind me of like the wood beads that I would make for a tear tray. Now they have two pieces that are stuck together. So I'm just going to snip, snip them off. And then I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to do a bright blue shiny instead of wood beads, bead <laughs> garland for my tear tray. It was so easy. Okay, it's time to put this thing together. So this is my new tear tray and I thought it would be easiest to go in first with my lights that I got at the Target Dollar Spot and kind of string them along the bottom and then up over the second tier and maybe even through the handle to kind of make the stars kind of go all over the place and provide like even lighting. And these stars were so cute. I'm glad that I decided to add that touch. It really made um, the tear tray. Everybody seems to like it. And we are ready to decorate this thing. Here is that little fan that I got at the Dollar Tree. I didn't have to do anything to it. It kind of reminds me of a bunting. And I'm just gonna sit that on the back of my top tray to give me a nice splash of color. And I'm just adjusting it the way that I want. It's so easy to work with that piece. I'm so glad that I grabbed one of those. And then here is our fireworks. Should have been easy projects, but <laughs> those actually made me work for them but I love how they turned out. They definitely look like exploding fireworks, which was what I was going for. And that little flag bucket is so cute. Here is one of the sublimation stars that I made. And I'm just gonna sit that little guy right here in the back. Now, when you're doing a tear tray, you wanna kind of fill every corner with something interesting. And so that's what I'm doing. Here is our United States, and I really love this piece, so I want it to be kind of the star of the show. And I'm going to string the lights up over it, and that white star looks really nice against the wood like that, and it doesn't cover up any of the little personalized touches that I did there to the front of it. And I'm just going to lean that up against the handle of the tear tray there. I think that looks really good there. Okay. Now let's work on the bottom. Here's that USA sign that we just made. And I'm gonna sit it back here at the back where it can kind of peek through. And here is the stacked books that we made, the stars and stripes. And I thought it would be a really good idea to hide the battery pack underneath my little stacked book since it's an open crate and you won't be able to see it. So it's kind of functional there as well. And that fit really nicely on that shelf. And I love this tear tray. Check them out for sure. And this is the firework that I made out of the arrow. And I put the double-sided tape on the bottom. And I'm going to stick that on my tear tray like that the rocket is like shooting off to the side there. So even though it's too tall, um, it totally still works there on this side of that tear tray and I'm just kind of adjusting things as I go and here is our little striped sublimation star and I'm just going to kind of sit that back behind the little pole there and here is our adorable little uncle Sam gnome that I made the little flag for his hand normally I make my gnomes but he was so cute and easy and inexpensive that I just could not resist him. Just adjusting his flag a little bit in his hand. And then I'm gonna kind of make it look like he is decorating the tear tray. So I'm gonna put like one of those little star lights in his hand, like he is decorating the 
tray. And here is our little red truck with the flag in the back sign. That was so easy, made out of a paper plate from the Dollar Tree and a little wood sign from the Dollar Tree. And this is the star that we covered in the fabric from the bandana from the Dollar Tree. And I love that one, so I want it to be right here in front, like the star of the show on the bottom there. And the last piece there is just some sparklers from Target. And they go perfectly because they're the flag colors. They're very 4th of July with some classic sparklers and a fun little touch to finish off the tear tray. Now, I think the only thing we have left is the beaded garland, which was so easy using this giant chain from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna string that along my tear tray like I would with a wooden wood bead garland. I'm just kind of going to go through the handle here, string it along the top, fill in any open spaces on our tiered tray, let it spill down into the second tier of the tray, and just kind of sit it around things and have it end there at the little stacked books. And we have it, guys. This is my Fourth of July um, patriotic tear tray by my front door. And I just love how it turned out. What do you guys think? The fireworks may have been a challenge, but they turned out really cute up there. And I just love that personalized flag. I'm so glad that I personalized it. And that gnome is adorable. And I love the, the quirkiness of the sparklers. <laughs> I did absolutely nothing to the sparklers, just put them on there as is. And the beaded garland is a nice bright blue and it's shiny and it reminds me of the 4th of July. And this whole tear tray just makes me so happy to look at it. It's just so much fun. It's so bright and so patriotic. And I'm really glad that I, I kept everything, the, the bright reds and blues and whites. I think it just looks so patriotic for the United States as we celebrate Independence Day. I just love how it turned out. What do you guys think? Oh, if you wouldn't mind... If you could hit that subscribe button and you'll get to see more of my craft ideas. I do a lot of coastal. I do a lot of crafting from Dollar Tree and I even do sublimation. If you're just interested in sublimation, check out my other channel too, Sublimation Beach. It's brand new, but I am going to do a lot of sublimation videos over there as well. And I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers and I'm getting so close, guys. So if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. Thanks, guys, and I hope everybody has a wonderful 4th of July. Until next time, bye!